to blue friends with the tragic i love you the most when you make me cry sad but it's true some kind of so i am joined with francis who is an all-round very very talented human she writes she sings she produces um you released your debut single fire may save you in 2014 and then you went on to release grow say it again borrowed time which was produced by disclosure to name a few and then release your debut album things i've never said in 2017. Wow. You, yeah right you'd think that was it but it's not you then went to write on and produce for other people, like This Is On You, Maisie Peters, one of my favorite songs ever. Oh. You wrote All I Am by Jess Glynn. All I Am by Jess Glynn, which charted at number seven in the UK, and it was on her album, which charted at number one, right? Good, yeah. Yeah, crazy. And in 2020 alone, you've written two songs that have been released on Megan Trainer's latest album, Treat Myself. You've written my favorite song of 2020 so far, Hallucinate by <laughs> Dua Lipa, which is insane. And you were named PRS for Music's one of 100 most successful female songwriters in the UK. That was so funny. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> I feel out of breath just saying all of those things. Like, that is mad. Like, it is a bit mad. It is a bit mad. You're so freaking talented. And obviously, I've worked with you for, we must have written together probably like two years ago now ish. Probably. Yeah, I think so. Um, and we've written some incredible songs together, some of my favourites, which we can't talk about because they're not released yet but they will be. Um, and you were actually my first all-female writing session. Yeah. It's a moment that I will hold very dearly. We had our first session with Jin Jin, um, who is also an amazing writer. And yeah, as a writer and a producer, it's amazing what you do. Not only have you been an artist in the past and still you are an artist, but how did you get into producing? I kind of by accident because I was doing lots of well when I decided to like take a little bit of a break from the artist thing and start writing more um I just I was doing lots of sessions with lots of other like other writers and other producers which I loved but then I was like I feel like I'd like to just write with artists on my own or like just have them with me because I know when I was an artist and I would like go I know what it feels like to go around and like do all the sessions and you're constantly at like different studios all the time when I went just to work with one person uh, say at their house or their flat or whatever I instantly just felt so much more relaxed yeah um because I feel like when you're going to a studio there's just like pressure that things have to just kind of sound finished straight away because you're in like that kind of studio environment and you're recording on the big microphone and it's like oh my god whereas especially when like no, nobody really grows up doing that we all kind of start singing in our bedrooms and i don't know doing karaoke like wherever it is you don't start in these big studios so yeah um yeah so i kind of just started i said to my manager i was like look i think we should just i'm gonna throw myself in the deep end and just get artists around to write with me and i'll just like wangle my way through sessions trying to produce and that's what I did basically and I was pretty like rubbish to start with but I just would and I'd always done like logic on the laptop anyway logic's like the music software I just didn't know um and like, I'd make my own demos and stuff like that but to have someone else in the room while you're doing it is a like, very different thing so yeah I just threw myself in the deep end got people around um and just yeah completely like blagged it um I made their demos and then eventually people like a couple of artists, I think like Sodi was the first one, who we both love. Um, she and her label were like, oh, could you just finish these demos? And I was like, what? <laughs> They're like, can you finish them and actually produce a song? And I was like, yeah, I guess I can. And you kind of realize that actually produ producing a track is just just a, a few more days work than you've spent on the demo. It's the same thing. It's just finessing it really. So then I started to do that um, and I really enjoy it. Did you ever think that you would like be producing because obviously let's go back to like 2014 when you were releasing your first single did you ever imagine yourself like being a writer and a producer over an artist yeah so 
So before I started doing the artist thing, I always planned to kind of write first, to write for other people first. But like, I'm sure many people understand, like if you kind of enter this industry and suddenly like luck of the draw, a record label's like, hey, you're cool. We want to sign you. You're not going to be like, no thanks. Yeah. <laughs> um, when you're like 20, 21, just come out of uni and someone says they want to sign you, like you're going to do it. So I just went like full, throttle into the artist thing with that and I didn't really have time to write for other people at the same time so I was like kind of thrown in in the deep end with the artist thing um so then when I released the app my first album I was like I really need like get in the studio spend more time in the studio and write with other people um so yeah it was really nice like I felt like I was doing what I'm supposed to be doing I love being an artist but I love the the making of the music like that's always been my favorite bit yeah of the whole thing. I get that because I I've been a performer since I was like three, and yeah. these past two years I've not been able to do that, and I get this itch to perform, whereas obviously mm -hmm. you get the itch to like be behind the scenes and make the music and be in that sort of studio environment. So I think it's really it's really interesting. Um, when did you decide, and and what were the reasons that you were just like, do you know what the artist thing is done? Because I feel like I vaguely remember you putting out like a statement that said, mm -hmm, yeah. "I'm I'm done for now. Maybe I'll come back in the future, but for the moment, the artist thing, I'm just sort of going to leave it here." What what was the 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 reasoning behind that, and what was the moment that you realised that you were like, "I'm I'm done for a bit now." I think it's like a lot of like different things that kind of fed into it but ultimately being an artist wasn't exactly what I thought it would be um, in the sense that I love making music, I love producing it, I love writing it, I like singing it on my own, <laughs> <laughs> not necessarily with an audience um, but so when I was suddenly kind of, I was very grateful to be given the opportunity and like people to have faith in me like record labels and stuff to really kind of throw me in and like send me off to do like lots of promotion and like i think i went to like 17 countries in a year which is incredible wow and like like loads of festivals and ticked a lot of stuff like off the the bucket list which like i will always be grateful for mm -hmm. um but it's also like very the whole thing's very overwhelming and I'm also not, I'm just not necessarily built for it. And I don't think everybody is. No. Um, I'm not built for, I mean, luckily my artist thing didn't get to a point where fame like came into it really. Mm. Other than like at my own shows, obviously I'd go and meet people afterwards and they'd be like, Ooh, I'm a fan. I'd be like, <laughs> 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 um, but as in like obviously there was, I had no issue, never had any problem like walking down the street. And I, I'm actually so grateful that that never happened to me because I think I would, if it did, I would have been forced to carry on in the, with, with what I was doing in the artist thing. And I think it would have been very unhappy. Yeah. So I'm really glad that it was at a point where I could like reasonably decide to not do it or to just take a break, mm -hmm. um, which was really good. But yes, it's very kind of overwhelming. I, it, I didn't enjoy how perception of, or the way other people perceived me changed. So it's not how I, I didn't change. I don't think I changed at all. Obviously people change all the time, but I don't believe that I was behaving any differently to how I was before I'd started like playing live or playing festivals or before people like, hey, I heard you on Mojo One. Like, I don't believe that changed my opinion of myself, for example but other people's opinion of you changes and you must have experienced this obviously with the X Factor. Yeah. And it's like kind of, you know, extended, you know, friends of friends of friends and friends of friends of friends of family start to behave a little bit differently around you. And you suddenly, you suddenly start to feel a little bit, I anyway, just felt a little bit uncomfortable with that. And it, I saw a glimpse of what it might've been like if things had really progressed by my artist career and I've become famous whatever you want to call it um and I didn't I didn't like it makes sense it makes sense I mean I was a big fan of you as a as an artist I, I think the first song I discovered of yours was grow 
Um, and I can't remember exactly how I came across it, but I know that my manager was like, I've heard this song. I think it was on Amazon Prime advert, was it? Yes, it was, yeah. Yeah, and he was like, I've heard this song and never in my life have I heard a song on the TV and gone straight to Shazam and bought Aww. it. And he was like, this song, Grace. And I knew about it already and I used to sing it all the time and I still haven't learned it on piano and I will do one day in my life. <laughs> but it that song really changed a lot of things for me. So I had a chat with Lauren Aquilina the other day and I was like, you know, saying, part of the reason that I started writing was because of artists like Lauren and like you, because I heard these songs, these classic piano, just gorgeous, timeless tracks. And I was like, this is what I want to do. And Grow was a massive, massive inspiration for my song Roots. Mm -hmm. um, and just your whole album, I remember sitting there, I remember the Don't Worry About Me music video. I sat my mum down and I was like, mum, you need to watch this. Now you're going to cry, but it's really good. <laughs> And it was, you know, your music inspired me a lot. Um, how yeah. was being played on Radio 1? Because you did like Radio 1 Live Lounge and things like that. Was that an exciting thing for you or was that more daunting or? It was really exciting. Because mm -hmm. I think even though like a lot of the time when I was doing all that stuff, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah. Um, I also some kind, sometimes could like step away and be like, wow. Like when I'm 50, I'm gonna remember this, and this is actually really cool. Um, like I, I always wanted to do a Radio One Live now. I think I did the, like a bucket list when I was probably like 14, and created ridiculous things on it. But I think Radio Live when Radio One Live Lounge was on there because I was obsessed with the Live Lounge that Adele did when she covered Promise This by Cheryl, and I was just like, one of my favorite things. Okay. And I would cover it at school, and like me and my friends did a version of it in concert at school. And it was just, I'd always like, Live Lounge is just a thing that everyone knows about. So yeah, I mean, I was terrified doing Live Lounge. I had to do it twice as well. Really? And the first time, yeah, the first time I found out about it two days before, because, oh my God, what are their names? What's the band? Libertines. All right. Um, had pulled out like two days before. Um, and it was live lounge month, so they needed to find someone for like every day. So I literally had like a day or two's notice. And I was in the hairdresser, and my manager was on African safari, <laughs> his family. <laughs> so he's telling me, he's like, you're going to do live lounge? <laughs> what? Um, so I had like a day or two to prepare. And luckily, they like, I was given like a choice of two songs, like two songs to do, I think by the label at the time. I was like, thank you, I will choose one. <laughs> because if I'd like had free reign, I just would have freaked. So, but yeah, I was very like very nervous for that. And the countdown you have in your headphones is horrendous. The one that played the radio, and it's like ten, nine, eight. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can uh, sort of imagine having performed on live TV, like with. Oh, can't can imagine. Out. It's just the the person in your ear, like okay, so uh, the red light is on. Grace, do not say anything that you're not supposed to. And I'm like okay. <laughs> It's very oh, scary. It's this anxiety that you're suddenly going to do something really outrageous that you've never done before. Of course you don't, but it's fine. But it's an odd experience. Yeah. But amazing. What What would you say is your? If someone said to you, like, what's the 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 point of success for you? Like, what's something that you can take away from your career so far and go, I did that. I think. Live Lounge actually is probably one of them because it's something that I've always wanted to do. And then, even though I don't particularly enjoy performing, um, I played at Coachella, which was... Wow, nice. I didn't know that. Mm, that was in 2016, so... And it also, because I'm not that much of a cool person, I wasn't really that like aware of what Coachella was before. <laughs> um, and people said to me, I was like, oh, I'm playing this like, thing called Coachella. And they're like, what? what the fuck? Um, so, and then when I went, I was like, oh, yeah, this is kind of cool. Yeah, this um, is like a big thing. <laughs> big deal. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like looking back on that, that was really cool. Let's talk quickly about um, the Dua Lipa thing. Mm. Purely because, I mean, first of all, one of the biggest artists in the world right now, so amazing. Yeah. 
but also it's just one of my favorite songs so hallucinate which is off her new album future nostalgia um you wrote with sg lewis sg lewis okay so how did that come about were you writing for doer or were you just writing because did you write with her so me and sam so sam's sg lewis uh -huh. we went to we went to university together um at, with our manager as well so i like me and Sam were, I think Sam was pretty much the first person I wrote with and I was the same for him. Um, so it was really nice. We've written together ever since and we've written loads together for his music. Um, and he is working on a new record at the moment. And we've been doing loads of like writing together for that. And we just randomly got together. Um, it was actually like a camp for Spotify, like a secret genius one and we we were just playing and like he was making this like insane beat but he does that like every day of his life so we were just like yeah cool and we just weren't really that like not like we just weren't that enthusiastic about what we were doing we loved it but you just it just shows you just never know like what the good ones are we knew we loved it but we've also loved things that other people have thought the shit so it's just <laughs> you just never know and then um Dua got to hear it through uh, I think it was Sam's publisher actually who knows her A and R and like got the song into the ears of the right people, um, and then uh, said they really liked it. And then uh, Dua heard it and she really liked it. It's like where is he? And then um, she vocaled it in LA um, with a really amazing vocal engineer. And then came back to London and me, Sam, and Dua got together and wrote the middle eight because it didn't have anything after the second chorus. Ah. Um, so we just did the same as what we always do, but which is really nice because it meant that we could get together with Dua and she could come and write on it because... Yeah, she can have her own little spin on, on what you guys did because essentially, yeah. it, you know, it is her song, she's released it, but it's nice for her to have had a little input into it. Totally as well. And we all, I was also really up for her changing stuff about the song, like if she wanted to change lyrics or like change up melodies and stuff. Um, but when she vocaled it in LA, we got it back and it sounded incredible. And she hadn't really changed anything, so we were like, Ew. and then when we did the middle eight, like she wrote that basically. Like I sat in the room, like yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like being her scribe, and she just like spouted out these amazing lyrics and amazing melodies. It was really fun process. I mean, I freaking love that song. I love it. It's right. like Afro P. So yeah, uh, 2020. Dreaming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Thank you so much for chatting to me today. I super appreciate it. Obviously, we're like good friends and chat on WhatsApp every day about cats and food and TikToks and everything. So, um, you know, it's no, not, nothing that's not usual, but also just like <laughs> to have someone who's such a huge inspiration and help me in my career and, and give me the songs that I I've always wanted to release. Obviously, we've written songs oh, together. Right. Adore and and I can't wait for the world to hear them. Um, so yeah, I very much appreciate you and thank you for chatting. Thank you for having me. It's a joy as always. Amazing. <laughs>